Here on FTD Facts, we've gone to great strides to understand many different cultures and people from around the world, which means we've done many videos looking at different cultures and countries and finding out what is great about them. But here today on FTD Facts, we return to the great and amazing country known as Austria, a beautiful country that is also well defined and contributes much to the world as we know. So for our returning viewers, welcome back to learning more about the country of Austria, a place that is all about peace, prosperity, and has a history and amazing culture. Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to FTD Facts. My name is Dave Wapple, and for our returning viewers, man, yeah, that's right, we're getting back and we're talking about Austria. For all of you guys who are new here for the channel, well, we talk about cultures and countries a lot, and if that's your thing, well, you want to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification because this is the kind of stuff that we upload. Now, for me, I'm very excited to talk about Austria because, first of all, I find it a very beautiful and awesome country, and it's just rather different from my own country, and it's different from other places around the world. And one thing that I really love learning about Austria as we find more history about it we find out how different it is from Germany which a lot of people from around the world will sometimes identify Austria and German as so similar that they're pretty much the same but that's not really the case now also keep in mind guys if you guys are really liking this content and you want more stuff around Austria well hit that like button because if we get over 5,000 likes then we will do a part three I guess or we'll dive into more particular culture maybe we'll talk about the militaries of Austria and go into those sort of topics but either way let's get cracking on this so one of the big things that you guys were talking about in our last video you guys had mentioned that dialects were a huge thing within the country and this is because in our last video we talked about languages and sort of the ethnic groups that are within the country but it was the topic of dialects that most of the people in the comments were talking about and for me I was shocked because I mean for myself I don't really hear a lot of different dialects to me because I'm English it all sounds very much the same not really to offend anybody but when it's a foreign tongue and a foreign language it's really hard to identify differences but one thing that is pretty fascinating is the amount of dialects that are within this country of course most people will suggest that there is just the Austrian and Bavarian dialect in which they make up the largest speaking group but of course there's also the Alemannic dialect which is also a large part that is more located to the west but as for the amount of dialects within Austria it's actually uncounted and it's hard to actually figure that one out the reason for this is because people within the country have said that they've encountered many different dialects within big cities such as Vienna and of course within these cities and villages and states they have many different grammar and vocabulary differences and just to clarify for me at first I wasn't really sure the difference between dialects and accents accents is really how you pronounce sort of things with a sound dialects is based off of vocabulary and that sort of stuff another thing that we also missed in our last video which we needed to talk about was the amount of thermal spas and springs that are in the country and for Austria they have a lot of thermal spas and it's a very very popular thing within the country and although there are many different places throughout the country that have major spas if we look at Vienna for example it is the only capital in the world that can claim to have its own thermal spa which is known as Oblura Therm. Also, the spa town known as Bad Gastine has a spa that sits at approximately 1,110 meters above sea level. Now, I don't know if that means that's the highest sort of spa in the world. I'm going to assume not, but that's still pretty awesome. And to move along with other topics that we've missed, one thing that we got to talk about is coffee. This is because coffee makes up a huge part of Austrian culture. And for the coffee culture, one thing that I found really fascinating is the legend that surrounds how coffee first came to the country. Because for coffee culture, it started all the way back in the 17th century, largely due to the fact that the Turks were trying to invade Vienna, which they began their assault on July 14th, 1683. And it was during this battle that coffee became a huge thing. But before we get into that, we also got to look at some other really cool myths and legends that came from the Battle of Vienna of 1683. For example, they believe that this was the pinnacle moment of the Ottoman and Habsburg War, which lasted over 300 years. During this battle, it was also noted to have the largest cavalry charge in human history, which consisted of over 20,000 Polish, Austrian, and German cavalry who rushed against the Turks. 
Now that particular fact on the Calvary is not considered an actual mythological or legendary thing, it's considered fact by historic papers. But when it comes to certain legends around the Battle of Vienna, there are a lot of culinary legends. Which actually guys, I'm not gonna lie, there is so much information about the culinary myths and legends around this particular battle, but I'm gonna go into just a few of them. And to get into some of these legends, we need to jump back to coffee, because it's majorly believed that after the Battle of Vienna, the Turks left behind bags and barrels of coffee. In which shortly after the battle, Jerzy Krzyzewski, who was a diplomat for the country, but was famous for also retreating from the city during the siege and bringing in reinforcements which helped win the battle, ended up taking the coffee beans and opening the first coffee house that same year. There's also rumor that the whole adding milk into tea and coffee was started from him, but in contrast to this wide legend, it's also believed that an Armenian man named Johannes Theodot was the first man to introduce a coffee house in 1685 into Vienna. But that's not the only thing, guys. We also got to talk about the croissant. Now, a lot of people look at the croissant and they say, well, it's got to be French. It sounds like it's from France. You know, it's a pastry sort of thing. Yeah, baked good. It's got to be from France, right? Well, believe it or not, it's widely believed that actually the croissant originated from Austria and more specifically Vienna. Because after the Battle of Vienna, it's widely believed that bakers from Austria actually celebrated by baking bread in the shape of crescents that are present on the Ottoman flag. And as for it becoming a French delicacy, it's believed that Vienna-born Maria Antoinette made the croissant famous when she introduced pastries to the country of France. And also, if you sometimes go to France, you'll notice that croissants are sometimes called Viennese breads. All right, let's move along, stop talking about food, and let's look at some other really cultural aspects of Austria. For example, and one of my most favorite things, is that Austria was home to the first woman to be nominated and win for a Nobel Peace Prize. And the woman who was famous for this is known as Bertha von Suttner in which she was not only the first female to win for that particular prize, but she was also the first Nobel laureate of the entire country, and the second female to win a laureate in the entire world. She won this because she was a big voice for Austria's peace movement, after writing her book Die von Nieder, which means lay down your weapons or arms, which she wrote in 1889. Also, it should be noted that she was a major influence and friend to Alfred Nobel, and because of that, she is one of the reasons why Alfred Nobel included a peace prize in his will when he died in 1896. Now, one thing that we also got to talk about when it comes to the achievements of this country, we also got to talk about sound. That's right, I'm talking mock. So, of course, when we travel at certain speeds, we are always affected by other forces, whether it be gravity or wind. And of course, when we think of the speed of sound, we identify it as Mach, which has its own rating system, which begins with Mach 1. But did you know that the term for Mach actually comes from an Austrian scientist? Even though the term Mach was coined by Swiss aeronautical engineer Jacob Accurette in 1929, he decided to name it after the Austrian scientist Ernest Mach, who was a physicist and philosopher that contributed so much to science that he even forced foreshadowed Einstein's theory of relativity. But either way, guys, there you have it. That is just a look at some of the interesting facts about Austria and how Austria's influence has affected the world. My name is Dave Wapple, guys, and I want to thank you, the viewers, for taking your time to sit and learn about Austria and find out what is truly amazing and unique about this country. Me, I always love learning about different places around the world, and I hope you guys really do too. Now, with that in mind, if you guys love this video and you want more stuff on Austria and Austrian culture, Dude, hit those, and dudettes, I should say, hit those like buttons because if we get over 5,000 likes, then we will do more videos on Austrian stuff, maybe a part three or even talk about the militaries or something like that. Of course, if it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so you can keep into tune with all of the stuff that we are doing and talking about. And oh yeah, with those comments, be sure to also let us know some facts that we might have missed in our first and second part because we love learning. It's just what we do. But either way, this is the country of Austria, one amazing place that doesn't stop even in a despairing moment. A country so ingrained with history that objects, food, and things that we know of that may be familiar from other countries around the world have actually had legends of origins within Austria. A place of food, peace, science, and art. This is the people, culture, and country of Austria. 
where if time stood still, one would always find knowledge. Thanks for watching guys, hope you really liked this video. Now here's some other content for you guys to check out. And by the way, here's our part one on our Austria video, be sure to check that out as well. But thank you guys for tuning in, hit the subscribe button, and keep learning with us every single day. Alright, well, don't forget to leave a comment for what you want next, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.